Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you for tuning in. I've been busy for, uh, for a few days with my brand new granddaughter and having a great old time getting to know, getting to know her and helping, you know, helping my daughter and, uh, and my son-in-law. But uh, I'm back, I'm back in the fish room and I just wanted to share with you a quick update, let you know where everything is at and also I'll talk a little bit about uh, the difference between keeping large fish and smaller fish and what I like and, uh, and what I dislike about, about each one. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it and, and look at all the tanks and talk about large fish versus small fish. Because as you know, originally I was, uh, I was exclusively a big, a big fish guy, a big, big cichlid guy, like the fish in the tank here to my right, the 210 gallon, or, um, or the 300 gallon that I'm looking at right in front of me with the, Afri with the African cichlids. That was, that was what I was all about. I was all about big fish. I would say in the last uh, two years, I've diversified and now keep uh, a variety of fish that I never thought I'd keep before. I'm just surprised at how much I'm enjoying it. So let, let's get into it. Let's just, let's just take, take a walk around and talk about it. All right, let's go. This is a 55 gallon planted community tank with uh, egg layers. There, it's no live bears in here. There's a good variety of fish, some that are gonna be eventually too big, like these, these albino AC heckleis or albino acaras as they're referred to, sometimes are gonna be a little bit too large for this setup. So they'll move to another tank like the 90 gallon rimless, which I'll show you in a minute where they can be in with other, another Hecli that's in there and bigger geos. But this tank uh, you know, has uh, Crips and Jungle Val and Hornwort and Anubias and just a variety of plants that, that seem to be catching, right? They seem to be doing okay. I do want to fill it in some more and uh, um, might be able to work something out with uh, Aquarium Co-op get some more plants in here. But the ones that I do have seem to be doing pretty well. By the way, that little clip back there is something that's made by a company called Zoomed. And it's a very easy way to offer zucchini and cucumber or any kind of vegetable to your fish. It has a little float. You can float it if you want. I don't know if you can make it out with this lighting. You can float it with this. Or, I, or you can do like I do. I just leave it on the top of the, on the, top of the aquarium. Works really well. And uh, when they're done, I just pull it out. There are some cherry barbs in here. I tend to uh, stay away from barbs because they can be a little nippy, but there are a couple cherry barbs. There's some autos, some um, rasboras, and I love the way they school. Albino, they have an albino um, bushy nose down there. Some quarry cats, a few of them, some lemon and some serpatetras some rummy nose, another fish that tends to school. I think there's a little, a little red tail rasbora left there from a group that I bought a while back. They, they didn't really age well in this aquarium, don't know why. There are a few little neon tetras, about five of them. You would think they, it'd be hard for them to hide being so bright, but they hide very, very well. So everyone is doing well, and as soon as those those albino albinos put on some size, they're gonna, they're going to move they're going to move over here into this tank and uh, play with these big boys. And in here I have, of course, some what some have said are striped earth eaters, Surimanensis. Some say they're not. Um, I just call them my geos. I just like the way they look. They can be aggressive, in particular to each other. I also have uh, an AC Hecali, the non-albino variety. I also have a couple Severums in here. Beautiful gold Severum, one of my favorite fish. Very mellow. I don't know if you have gold Severums, but are they mellow? This is a red spotted gold Severum. Very, very mellow. Compared to the uh, red shoulder, which is, can be a bit of a jerk. There's also a, uh, 
a Siamese algae eater back there. And I've been keeping an eye on him to make sure he doesn't get nippy with my Congo tetras. And the Congos tend to kind of hang out in the back. And I don't know why, but they tend to school and hang out with those Buenos Aires tetras. I don't know why they do that, but they they are hanging out together. I also have a couple uh, of those uh, electric blue Okaras, which you know I, I just absolutely love. Very pretty fish. So I would want those those albinos, albino Okaras to be at least as big as the uh, electric blue Okaras. So they've got about another inch of length to put on and with that of course will come some more thickness in the body and then I think that they'll be better at, at holding their own in the 90 gallon but one of the reasons I love keeping these smaller fish like these especially uh, ones that are gentle on plants is that you can have plants and with some of my bigger fish plants are impossible you wouldn't even consider plants because they would be uprooted, dug up, and destroyed. And if you look at the, uh, the tank where my red terror, who's hiding behind this cave back here, look at this tank, how he's dug it up. It's just, it's just bare bottom right there. This was all level about three days ago. And you can see the pit here. This, so you can see the height here. He's moved all this substrate to the front. And then look at this back there. So he's just shoved all that substrate. So if I had uh, rooted plants in this aquarium, it would be a complete waste. Now, interestingly enough, the South and Central American 210 gallon tank, apart from the uh, Salvini, who you see right here, they really don't move the substrate around hardly at all. This is, this is her cave area over here and you can see that she creates this, this slope and a sort of porch, this sort of area in front of her cave that slopes downward. So she's moving, she's moving a, lot of, a lot of stuff around to create a very specific type of area for her to be in. And that's definitely hers. They're all gravitating over here thinking I'm gonna feed them. I feed them once a day. I already fed them this morning. They're not gonna get more food, but they're definitely trying to be in position just in case I do drop something in. Sometimes I'll drop a treat in in the evening, but maybe drop a little bit of blood worms or krill or something like that. So they're, uh, they're, they're poised and ready to pounce. The silver dollars continue to put on good size and also they usually stay in a pretty tight group. You can see right here, these four. There's one trying to, trying to mate, doing a little mating vibration there. The biggest one is back there. He's got a little bit of a red in, the, uh, in his lower fin there. His anal fin has a little bit of a blood red in it, very pretty. There's the fire mouth. He was so fired up yesterday, I posted a, a video on Instagram I mean, it was the deepest sort of scarlet red that I'd ever seen. Love the colors on this vieja. Pinks, black. A little bit of a blue there in the anal fin. A little slow, slow growing Jack Dempsey. Nobody messes with her. Of course, nobody messes with the uh, Salvini. Green tear is also very slow growing. And of course there are a couple a couple chocolates. One of them is back there. And they can sometimes dis display incredible patterns depending depending on the mood that they're in. There's the Nicaragua. I think she's a beautiful fish. I think she's from a different region. I think she's more central or as opposed to South America. But she holds her own. She does have face-offs with the, with the uh, fire mouth from time to time. 
never seems to turn into anything too violent. Have you had an albino Oscar? Did you notice that it grows a lot slower than the other Oscar? This is, this is just a regular tiger Oscar right here. They came in at the same size. I suspect they were, they were maybe born at the same time from the same parents, but uh, in a matter of just a few months, you could really tell a difference. But the reason I love keeping size like, you know, this size of fish is the interaction. They really are fearless and they will follow me around. They're like puppy dogs that the, the Vieja is a little more skittish. The Oscar has no fear whatsoever. The Vieja will eventually work, it, work his way over. Jack Dempsey doesn't seem to have much fear. The Salvini has no fear. If I can get her over here, get her interested. But I love the interaction of these fish. If I, was to, if I do this in the 55-gallon uh, planted, the fish will be darting around just absolutely crazily. Put your hand up there, and the albino carls will come over. But the other fish, they just want nothing to do with you. But the Akaras, they will actually follow you around and and respond. And they you know, they will be eventually a bigger fish. They can get up to seven inches, be kind of beefy. Interestingly enough, the uh, the red terror is not is not that much of a interactive fish. He's very much on the shy side. Makes me wonder if I could put him in a 210 gallon because his temperament seems a little shy and, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know how he would react if I put him in with other fish. Maybe he would lose his mind the way cichlids do sometimes. This is a 300 gallon African cichlid tank. And the fish in this tank are probably averaging around seven to 10 inches, somewhere in there. Some of them are, are, are deceptively large, larger than you'd think. Like that, that Kawingi right there is probably close to 10 inches. This Rhodesia yellow, Bucachromus Rhodesia yellow is pushing nine. So, so is this Fusco. Fusco is very interactive. And I, I really think that he would bite me if he had a chance. Again, one of the things I love about these fish, the larger fish, they look you right in the eye, they'll eat from your hand. I mean, small fish can do that too, though. You can really see the detail on a fish that's larger. Look at the scales and the edges of the fins. You could really make out the color pattern. The sand divers really has no fear. He's pretty bold. This gar has really colored down. I think he might actually either be feeling very subdominant or maybe maybe he's just older. Just an older gar. I remember taking a picture of him when I first got him and he was spectacular in his colors. And he's really colored down. That can sometimes be subdominance, but it can also be age. This hawk is incredible, but this hawk is very shy as far as big fish go. Even when he thinks I'm gonna be feeding, he'll kind of hang back. But he's got great color going on in the head, body, anal fin. A lot of you like the trout. Tell me the trout's your favorite. Some of you like the sand diver. I think that if you folks could see the Kowingi in person, that would be one of your favorite fish because the camera doesn't really do him justice. All right, Fusco, little camera hog. 
Good. Going after me. Really wants a piece of me. He probably has some small teeth that would that I would definitely feel if he bit me. But you really don't get this kind of interaction with a little rasbora or a neon that is scurrying behind a, behind a rock every time you walk by. This kind of interaction is more something you're gonna get with bigger fish. And one of the reasons I love bigger fish. A turquoise cichlid. Great, great shape, colors, strigatus. When I come over to this 29 gallon, you can forget everything I told you about small fish being skittish because these uh, rainbows, these blue neon rainbows, have no fear. Look at this, they just, they just, they don't run and hide. They come right up against the glass. They follow me around. They can actually school from time to time. They get a nice red tail, beautiful blue in the body. They're a dwarf rainbow fish. And I fell in love with them. So I picked me up some. I had uh, four and I lost one and I picked up a, a few more. I've got seven of them now. That's a good group. Now when they put on some decent size, a little thicker, just a little bit bigger, because they're not, they're not gonna get that big. When they get a little bigger, I think I'll move them over to the 55 gallon planted aquarium. Right around the time when I pull the acaras out of there, I'll probably put these rainbows in there. Again, I have another one of those clips holding some cucumber that my little baby, I have like, like a bunch of little uh, pleco fry in here. They'll, they, mun they love munching on that. And I see that the dad was guarding that cave back there behind that driftwood and fanning it. So I've got, an, I've got another, uh, another batch of babies coming, I'm sure. But yeah, these neon rainbows are real pretty fish. Dwarf rainbows. I also have a lot of, uh, of those pagoda snails in here and, and they're, they're having a lot of offspring, a lot of little babies. Look, at here's one up here. That's a little baby pagoda. Very, very cute. There's another one. So for every reason that I like big fish or like small fish, I mean, you'll find exceptions. You'll find exceptions to every, every, every anecdotal story you hear about fish. Here's some live bears and they don't really seem to display a lot of a lot of fear. I mean, they, they, they think it's feeding time. Again, I've got some very small pagoda snails in here as well. A couple corys. There's also a, uh, a pleco. You can see them hanging out there, hanging out of the cave. But there's some platies and some guppies. The main reason I love these guys is just because they, they're always having fry. And because I have a lot of hornwort in here, the fr it protects the fry. So a lot of them actually make it. Even though I do think I lost some of the guppies, I'm not sure what happened. I think maybe, uh, who knows, maybe the pleco's picking them off. <laughs> who knows? I don't worry about it. I don't want to get into a, a position where I have so many fish I don't know what to do with them, where I have to be taking batches over to the local fish store. So I just let nature sort of take its course. But I've got some nice little, nice little guppies coming around and obviously some males and some very nice little platies and a little horn dog male there trying to keep that one pregnant. 
you know, at this stage of my life, if you ask me to select just one type of fish or just keep one type of fish, you can only keep your big fish or you can only keep your smaller fish, it'd be really, really hard for me to choose because I'm really enjoying them uh, for different reasons. And it would be a real tough choice. But if, if I could only keep like one aquarium, I probably would keep, I don't know, probably, probably um, the medium size, maybe the Acaras, electric blue Acaras, maybe some red tapa, tapa hose with some Congos, a, a group of Corys. You know, if I can only keep like a 55 gallon, you know, planted 55 gallon in a, in a apartment or something, something like that would be, I think, a, a lot of fun, a lot of fun to work with. For the bigger fish, I think you really need to get up over 200 gallons, start getting into the bigger, you know, the, the, the Oscars, uh, the, the big boys like this here, like your, you know, your, like this trout here, and you, you, you really need, you really need six, six feet across, more usually, but, um, but there you go. I, I, I really like keeping both kinds of fish. I really couldn't pick, but, and I like them, for different reasons. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a, Pat a Patreon supporter and a member of the Garage Gang. This is a garage and I'm always working and expanding and doing things there. And a lot of it is because of the support I get from you, my Patreon members. The information is in the description below. It starts for as little as $3 a month and it helps a heck of a lot, more than you know. And if you'd like to uh, subscribe, just go ahead and uh, hit me in the mug right here. And if you'd like to watch another, uh, another series of videos that uh, I, I consider to be my best tips, go ahead and check out this playlist, this playlist up here. All right, thank you, my friends. You are the best. And I'll see you again maybe on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream at 11 a.m. Central Time. Bye-bye for now.